Good evening and welcome to Athens City Council. It's Monday, May 13th at 7 p.m. and we're in committee tonight. We have four committees meeting, the first one being City and Safety Services and that's chaired by Council Member Butler and joined by Council Members Fall and Grace. Thank you, President Nisley. We have two presentations this evening, first beginning with a uh, discussion and presentation from Comcore members. Um, Program Director Lauren Borovica is here this evening, uh, as well as Caroline Canning. And uh, Caroline will be presenting and giving an update about the 2018-2019 Comcore program that's been uh, placed at the community center. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, so I am the Comcore Community Wellness Liaison Member for the Athens Community Center and Hopewell Health Center. <coughs> and to start, just want to give a little refresher on Comcore. Uh, Comcore is an AmeriCorps program, a domestic Peace Corps, and the Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine receives funding to have this program in order to provide health services and health education to people here in southeastern Ohio. Um, and some of the, the goals, so this is actually a really exciting time for the program because we're shifting focus to address more of the social determinants of health. And one of the strengths of this program is that there are a lot of partnerships. There are 17 members and 15 host sites for this coming year which means there's a lot of opportunity to really pool resources. Um, so at moving forward, we're really focusing on the social determinants of health, which aligns well with this position, as I will get into, and really support the continued growth of this program. Um, so within my position description, I have developed four focuses. Um, and what I'm trying to, what I've been trying to accomplish. So the first is to reduce the barriers for our clients to get physically active. Uh, the second is to work with clients to develop personal goals and goals that are attainable. Um, the third is to provide wellness education and resources while simultaneously promoting some of our local organizations and initiatives. And the last is to create programming that is inclusive and accessible to our community members. Um, and I want to mention why, why this is important. Um, and there's a, lot, there's a lot of scientific evidence that discusses the benefits of exercise to helping individuals with mental illness. Uh, I highlighted just a few here. Uh, the first is a study looking at patients with schizophrenia that showed direct causal benefits of exercise once or twice a week on health and cardiovascular fitness and actually reduced the need for other forms of care. Uh, the second study here is a qualitative study, meaning they looked at a lot of different studies um, and found trends. And they found that a lot of the benefits of exercise also include the social aspects. Um, which is something that we really try to do in this position. Um, and the third is a study that talks about the benefits of professional support, or in this case, support in some capacity, having another person that can help maintain motivation for our clients. So that's where I come in. Um, so going a little bit further into these goals and how I've really worked to accomplish them. The first, Reducing barriers. So one way that I do that is working really closely with our wellness team at Hopewell Health Centers. And the wellness team is a grant-funded team that consists of RN care managers, dietitians, and our wellness consultant, Spencer Minnick, who is the former Comcore member and is an integral part of that teamwork in reducing barriers. Um, and as a consultant, Spencer also brings clients to the community center. And together, we work on creating an environment that is less intimidating, where people feel comfortable. Maybe they haven't worked out ever or in years. Um, so I don't know how well you can see it, but in the bottom corner there is a map of the fitness center. Because a lot of our clients will come in and say, 
I want to improve my balance or I want to strengthen my upper body. Mm -hmm. So this is a way that can kind of break down the fitness room in a way by muscle groups. So it's one way to make people feel a little more comfortable about where they're starting and how they're working towards their goals. Um, one last thing I want to highlight on this slide is this creating community. So Spencer Minnick started this group exercise class. So we have between 10 and 15 Hopewell members that come every Wednesday for this group exercise. And it's been an incredible thing because when we start, someone will talk about what we want to accomplish for that day. So someone may say, you know, I want to walk today. Someone else will say, well, I do too. And automatically it creates that connection, that, that exercise buddy. And we had a similar circumstance happen with someone who said, well, one of my biggest barriers towards getting physically active is transportation. I don't have any way to get to the community center. And someone else in the group said, well, I can pick you up. We can come together on a different day. So there's so much potential for, for this, this program. So that's been exciting. Um, my second goal is working on goal setting with my clients. So we follow a goal setting framework. It's called the SMART framework. And SMART is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound goals. So that means when we sit down with our clients, we can say, based on where they are, an example is a client wanted to walk at least 5,000 steps three times a week. So that's an example. Um, and I developed an incentive program as well. So this is a picture of a punch card that our clients receive. And anytime they come and meet with one of us or on their own and check in, they get a punch on their punch card and then there are rewards that they can they can pick from. So it's a, it's a fun thing. And um, I quickly wanted to show a little kind of give a face to what we're doing. So one of my clients, Rita, gave permission to highlight her journey and her progress. So this is Rita. And when we first started working together, we would do four laps around the track, which is about a third of a mile. And we slowly worked up to about nine laps. And then another community center person who comes around the same time every week said, I think you can do a mile and a half. And I said, I think you can do a mile and a half too. So the three of us went up to the track and we walked and we talked and we made it to a mile and a half without stopping. And Rita was so proud and excited. We went back downstairs and Rita told our cashiers and told other people around what she had done. And she was really excited because she didn't think she could do it. And now we walk between a mile and a half and three miles every week. And she knows she can do it and she feels really proud of what she's been able to do. So this is a picture of Rita after, she did, after we did our first three mile walk together. Um, my third goal is to provide education and resources to community members. So I use a bulletin board as a platform. Um, one thing that I do is I always share recipes, healthy recipes try to find recipes that have fewer ingredients, sometimes have seasonal ingredients. Um, and this is an example from Self Care Month. So have a handout that people can take on self care. Um, and again, the piece of promoting local initiatives and organizations and people. Um, on the one side of the screen here is an example of a farmer spotlight. So this was talking about our local farmers, and it was an interview. And um, it, in an effort to encourage people to buy local ingredients and support our, our local economy. Um, and my last goal is to create inclusive programming. So I developed something called a wellness series, which consisted of five monthly themes related to wellness. Uh, and each month, had a theme and had two events related to that theme. Um, and all of the events were free, so 10 events. And I was able to create a lot of local partners. And this allowed me to bring in expertise and support our local organizations. And it was a really great, great thing. There actually, there's one more event. 
But um, this is an example of my Charity Miles Challenge that I put together for January. Charity Miles is an app that donates 25 cents for every mile a person walks, bikes, dances, runs, and it's donated by corporate sponsors. So it's not coming from anyone's own uh, wallet, but um, it's still a way. It's, it's sort of another form of motivation, an extrinsic motivation. Um, so 25 people participated, and I set the goal that by the end of January, I was hoping we would move 1,000 miles. So by the end, we moved 1,017 miles and raised $254. So that was, that was really exciting. Um, and of course, an important aspect of this position is being able to continue its growth and allow the next member to make it their own but build off of what, what I have done, what Spencer has done. Um, so some of that is also collecting data. And I can get an idea of you know, interest and success. So this is data that just shows participation in the events. Um, so for example, the health screening was very popular and something that I think would be good to do again. And we had a total of 159 participants for the first eight events. Um, another metric that we looked at was community center utilization. How much our hopeful patients are utilizing the community center. So you can see the general trend of growth. And on the left here, this is unique memberships. So between the first time frame and the second time frame, bookmarked by November to April, you can see there's over doubled increase in memberships that were started. Uh, and between this last time frame and the current time frame, there's 37% increase. Um, and on the right hand side of the screen is total hopeful entries. And you can see that same pattern of growth, and it averages to about 10 punch-ins per, per client. Um, so really looking at this growth, we want to allow it to continue to grow. Um, and I think this is contingent on maintaining a really strong partnership between the community center and Hopewell Health Centers, and continuing to form relationships with local partners the same ones and new ones, um, in order to provide services that are still accessible to our Hopewell members, community center patrons, and community members as a whole. Um, and lastly, continuing to support ComCore as a program uh, so that it can continue to be sustainable and effective here in Athens. Um, and for the near future, my last wellness series event is over Memorial Day weekend, Pula Palooza involves some free games, water themed games, and trivia, and some healthy strawberry popsicles. Uh, are there any questions? I, I have yes. one comment, well, a couple comments. I think that this is really good. I've seen a lot um, more talk and people advertising um, Comcore a lot more, and I'm, I appreciate the, the push for the communication with the people. I also really appreciate the, 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 the data collecting, because a lot of times we don't have enough data, um, but going forward, it looks like you're gonna be putting an emphasis on that, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? This comes from Grace, oh, or by President Nisley. <laughs> I really appreciate the work you're doing, and thank you. And I was personally touched by seeing how much the personal interactions matter to you. And I think that that's a, a really great part of this program. And mm -hmm. so thank you for your commitment and, and the, making those personal connections. Thank you. President Nisley, yeah. Thank you. Uh, just thanks for being here tonight, and uh, we often see you at the community center, and it's <laughs> great to see the, there's a lot of enthusiasm that's generated, and you can just tell with the people that come into the community center. One question, your ComCorps is grant funded in part, and then part operating funds through the College of Medicine. Mm -hmm. the, I had a question about the memberships for the Hopewell uh, clients who are attending. Is that mm -hmm. paid for then by Hopewell, or? Yes. Okay. From what okay. I understand, through the 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 wellness team is funded by a grant, 
and okay. that same grant pays for the memberships for Hopewell members. Great, great. So it means that these memberships and continued enrollment is also supporting, continuing to support the community center. Good. Good. Well, I think that's a that's a great link. There's also there's a recent study out on longevity, and looking at you know like the, what are the top ten communities who where people live a long time, and so they looked at all of those and looked at some of the factors, physical activity, social interaction. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're you've got the right things going, so that's great. Good. Thank Thanks. I do believe um, Mayor Patterson also would like to comment. Was that correct? I, I do. Yeah. You know, having been. Uh, a, uh, an experimental health psychologist for many years. Your program is fascinating. You know, yeah. it's, it's really great seeing those numbers, and mm -hmm. hopefully those numbers can be translated in a way to where they can feed into maybe a, a grant renewal, if Hopewell is gonna, going to extend that grant. Because mm -hmm. I can see this being something that it'll spark a lot of interest mm -hmm. in the field for other community centers and, and um, institutions or uh, organizations like Hopewell to yeah. to look at this as well. Yeah. I agree with President Nisley, you know, the blue zone cities, um, you know, being able to connect with other people and to be involved with, you know, physical activity is, is paramount. So this is great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Caroline, for the presentation. I would like to echo the positive sent sentiments that have been shared. And um, thank you, Ms. Brobica, for continuing to support the program and, and the hard work that you're doing with Comcore. Uh, thank you, Spencer, as well, too, for uh, getting the program uh, up and going and, and Caroline being the conduit to continue it. Um, it is exciting. Um, Mr. Cheeky is here this evening as well, and he's the Assistant Director of Arts, Parks, and Recreation. Um, so you have a lot of support in the room, um, which, is, which is a blessing. Um, I'm hopeful to see this uh, continue to thrive as well. And uh, the sentiments that President Nisley and the mayor said um, as well as my fellow council members. I, I think you, you see where our supporters and where we stand. Um, we know that this is beneficial to our community on many uh, almost insurmountable levels. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Any, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, thank, we do, uh, at the podium, please. <laughs> well, I have a question for the person that Oh, yeah. Well, this way the mic, uh, the, the mic will pick up your question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I, I had a question uh, concerning, and I'm not sure who the, all the uh, clients of Hopewell are, but I'm concerned about people who may have problems with opiates and are in recovery, and I just wondered if, if there's any kind of program that's offered for those people at this time, because it's so crucial mm -hmm. that the community comes forward to provide help. So. Um, is there such a thing, and, and if not, is it possible that it, this can be expanded to provide such a thing? Yeah. Thank you. And, and yeah. thank you, Caroline. This, so that, that question was uh, offered by uh, Councilmember Pat McGee for uh, uh, those uh, <laughs> here in the room and on t out there in TV world. So thank you, Caroline. Yeah, yeah, thank but, you. you uh, yeah. So Hopewell has the capacity to help and serve people with substance abuse that are recovering. Some of my clients are recovering from substance abuse. Um, another component of this program is that I, I can help clients that are Hopewell or, or not, so anyone who comes into the community center can also <laughs> utilize the service. Um, and because of the direction that Comcor is moving, um, there's continued support for addressing these needs and those needs in the county. So there is another position with an integrated services that's doing a similar thing, and that will expand our capacity as a core. Um, and there is another new position with Serenity Grove, uh, which is a re women's recovery home, sober living space. So that's another way that Comcore is really moving to address that need. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. And may I, I may have one request, um, because one of the things I think that's exciting about this is all the various partnerships you know, the College of Medicine, mm -hmm. Comcor, uh, the City of Athens with our community center as well as Hopewell. And then if you could return to the slide that acknowledged the private sector that was also involved, some of the partnerships there. Um, thank you, so seven local partners there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I think this is, is relevant too because it does take a, you know, a village for right. all of us. Right. And 
a lot of these partners were very generous to do this for free and um, so I really took the opportunity to appreciate what they're doing for for the community and also take the opportunity to really promote them as organizations or individuals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Moving forward to our next presentation, President Nisley, this evening we have um, Director of the Convention Center and Visitors Bureau, Paige Alas, who's offering um, her update to us. I believe we have uh, some visuals uh, in the form of presentation and maybe even slides and uh, maybe some film. Music. Music. <laughs> Thank you, Paige. <laughs> The two hardest acts to follow are youth and inspiration, so I don't really know what I have left to tell you after that, because if you weren't inspired by that, you're not going to be inspired by anything I really have to say either, so I just have a quick overview for you. Um, Debbie Walker asked me to keep it to 10 minutes, and if you know me, that's a really hard thing to do, but I'm just going to give it my best shot tonight, so... Um, we have some fun things to share with you, too. And then my lovely assistant, Andrew Chicky, is going to be handing you some things <laughs> as well. And we have some additional little treats coming your way. So, okay. So, as you know, um, we are the Athens County Convention and Visitors Bureau, and our primary responsibility is to promote tourism uh, for both the city and the county. And we typically define that as messaging and promotion that takes place outside of a 50 mile radius of Athens. A lot of times people will tell us, I have no idea what you do, I've never seen your stuff before. Well, that's okay because the majority of our messaging, with the exception of social media, takes place outside of the area. Just to give you an overview of what the economic impact of tourism is, our most recent impact study was conducted for the year 2017, released in 2018. Uh, right at about $166 million in spending that our visitors provide to Athens County. And you can see how it's climbed since 2009. We were at about $112.1 million. We are the highest of our contiguous counties, um, including Hawking County, which people are always surprised at because it is, it is the Hawking Hills region. Mm -hmm. but we have more taxable activities here. And it really um, not only is based on the overnight stays, but um, also weighed in favor of the amount of sales tax that's generated from people outside of the county. So, It is huge. It is. It's yeah. big. Yeah. It's big for us. Um, we employ one out of every nine people in Athens County um, somewhere in the tourism industry. And um, I think the fact we had a night several weeks back where we had a conversation going on at this council about the Bailey's Trail, and we had a conversation going on in Nelsonville about their admissions tax. Mm -hmm. And people were like, oh my gosh, aren't you stressed out? Don't, you know, aren't you worried? I'm not worried at all. We're having a conversation about it. And it really reflects upon um, our local businesses' investment in tourism and the hospitality industry and our elected officials in making a commitment to furthering that development and growth and supporting what the businesses really want to bring here. And what is great and, and natural and easy about Athens, so. Our lodging tax has also grown. Just to give you a clue, I started my job in 2006 and the bed tax income for us was $238,000 this year, or that year. So we have grown considerably in the number of rooms that we have, but we have also grown in the average daily rate the amount of revenue our partners are able to make off of each room and the number of room nights that we're booking. So that goes through 2017 and this takes us to 2018. So you'll see what we received from the city of Athens and their TGT last year, which was 50%, and what we received from the county last year too. Just to remind you, we received 90% of the county, 50% of the city. We use the prior year's income to uh, formulate our budget for the year, so we're at a budget of $636,000. It seems like a really giant number compared to $238,000 in 2006. The bed tax has grown. Our partners have made significant investment, millions of dollars of investment in the product that we're able to offer in our lodging, in our attractions, our restaurants, and of course, the city and the county have made sizable contributions towards outdoor recreation and the arts 
that also encourage visitors to come here. Also, advertising has gotten more expensive, so um, we're grateful for our budget and for the fact that we're able to invest in this uh, really positive messaging um, about our city and our county. So where does the money go? Um, you saw it in the, in the pie chart back there. We have fixed costs, we have personnel costs, and then we have what we call our promotion and advertising costs, and that's really the bulk of um, where a lot of the money gets spent. So um, we manage two types of campaigns. Um, our office sort of operates as an advertising agency would. So um, we develop both tourism products or specific experiences that people can engage in. And then we also um, manage what we call culture campaigns or lifestyle campaigns that are really based on what it's like to be here. Other things that people um, will enjoy if they come here for one of these experiences other things that they will be engaged in when they come. So the product campaigns that we have running for this summer are our very infamous Brood on the Bikeway Tour, um, which continues to um, not only be a lot of fun, but actually is becoming quite a big draw for us. We're very excited that the Columbus Road Bridge will be open this summer. It was a little bit of a bummer last summer when we had a portion of it closed. Uh, but this um, brings people in from all parts of the Midwest to. Uh, to participate in this and it's a great way to feature something that's really important to our community the bikeway and also the breweries this is also a quilt national year um, so we will be heavily marketing quilt national and we actually have already this year and assisting the dairy barn to attend quilt con in nashville and a fiber arch festival in uh, pittsburgh in order to promote it it begins memorial day weekend and runs through labor day weekend and Ohio's Windy Nine, which is our nine curated route motorcycle experience. A lot of people will say, oh my gosh, motorcycles in Athens? Like, who saw that coming? Um, this has turned out to be something uh, pretty unexpected for us. And to give you an idea of the amount of business, we mail out on average 300 maps a week. Wow. This summer we have 25 groups booked. Um, that will bring us about 630 room nights. Now that's not individual riders. This is groups of 10 or more that we know that are coming to stay in our hotels. And the majority of those groups do reach out to us for assistance. They want their patches. They want to stop at the visitor center. But this has been um, an incredible amount of growing business for us. It remains the only product of its kind in the state of Ohio. And we have some great partners helping us, locally Athens Sports Cycles, but nationally Roadrunner Magazine, which is a motorcycle touring magazine. Um, they've been outstanding partners to us. And our hotel um, partners really love this product as well. So it's been um, a lot of work, um, but also a lot of really great, somewhat unexpected success. Paige, can you say the hotels, the amount of hotel rooms again for that one? It's about 630 room nights. Wow. And uh, 25 groups, and these are 10 or more. So we don't know. We, we, um, we see leisure riders that come into the visitor center because they want their patch. They've ridden all nine routes. They stay an average of three days. Most of them stay four days. Um, we see a lot of couples who come in who one person rides and the other person hangs out in Athens all day long. And they have a great time. Um, and what's the, the best thing about this product is it brings us so many people who have never been to Athens before who wouldn't otherwise choose to come to Athens, but who will return. We had a gentleman who stopped by our office last week, Henry, it's his third visit. <laughs> we know him so well that he walks in and I'm like, you got in your glasses. <laughs> he, he stuck around for our staff meeting and got his horoscope read. So I mean, we began to really know these people so well. And we form a relationship with them that, that encourages them to come back to Athens for other reasons and to share their experiences and being here um, with other people that they know, which then brings more people to us. So, We also manage a couple of what we call culture campaigns. So um, this is where we really promote the quality of life that exists here. So you'll see some general Athens campaigns, um, uh, particularly promoting uh, bike riding this year. It, it continues to be a really big draw for us and a really important part of our local culture that we want to tell the story on. And then we also run the Beyond the Hock uh, Hocking Hills campaign. This is a way for our local business owners to access the Hocking Hills market. 
It basically, basically says, here are the things to do after you've been to the park. And one of the chief things that we promote in that are the train and Nelsonville, but definitely um, the food aspect and the really wonderful food and, and brewery partners that we have here in Athens. Um, I think Chicky has some more treats for you. And so while he's doing that, you can look at Chicky while I manage the keyboard here to make a quick, pay no attention to what's going on over here. I'm going to show you a quick video. So we have some little fun treats coming around, and this shows you just how much we love um, our bike community. But in celebration of Athens being named in the top 20 bike communities in the U.S. by Bikes for People last week, and our celebration on the State House lawn where we promoted the Hawk Hocking Adena Bikeway, um, bike riding, brood on the bikeway, and other things. And we made a, just a fun little video. <laughs> So never tell your coworkers that you need a video for something and then expect them to not get right out there right away and get it done. Because, all right, now, now I have to work the internet and see, oh, more bell ringing. Okay. <laughs> so then we also, um, again, do something really specific that's product oriented, like food on the bike Pretty fun. And then one more. And this one is one, again, that goes with a culture campaign, but probably be specifically targeted into the Hocking Hills to highlight. Are you seeing a, a bell theme forming? Because I am. And then we do have a, a Windy 9 a motorcycle video on here. It's a minute and a half long, so I'll spare you of that, um, that detail. Now, let me see if I can get back to where I was. Here I am. Paige, I will acknowledge that I have not had dinner yet. <laughs> I haven't either. I know. But that gives you an idea. So what happens is when we run these campaigns, we run them on a social platform with Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We run them in print advertising based on what the ad and what the target audience is. We have a huge collection of digital ads. And I want to give a special thanks to our partners at The Messenger and Brick Street Media because they have done a great job in choosing audiences for us for our digital ads and then being able to reformulate those ads as they are in effect so that we can change those and um, either change the ads that are running or change the target so that we can make it more successful. Um, the majority of these also have either a map or a brochure or a guide or a website that actually go along uh, with them. So there's a whole package with, with each one of these campaigns that run. Um, and really a special thanks to the staff because they're the ones that really kind of bring this together. And this is what we call communicating culture. Um, you'll see it if you follow us on Instagram, if you follow us on Facebook. Um, we have a lot of fun, and sometimes it's Joel's work. His, his photographs are amazing and recognizable almost instantly. But we also share a lot of the photographs that come to us from people who just love um, what's happening here, who come to visit here, who live here, and who go to school here. We also are doing a lot of partnership engagement. As you know, we hired a partnership engagement manager, uh, Boone Troyer, last July. And his work has really been paying off, um, I think, not only for our organization, but for our partners as well. So he manages a series of monthly meetings with our lodging partners, our food and libation partners, our Nelsonville group. We have a quarterly mingling artist group, and of course our board meets each week as well, or each month. 
Um, we have a Tourism Partners newsletter. If you don't receive that already, you can go on our website and up at the very top, there's a newsletter link and you can sign up to receive that. It goes out at minimum of once a month. If there's special announcements or things that are going on, it'll go off uh, more more um, consistently than that. And then of course, Boone is also um, in charge of our Absolutely Athens Award. It's probably one of my most favorite things that we've done. And uh, it's a chance for us to really recognize um, people who work the front line, um, who are greeting visitors, who are working directly with our local residents, um, who aren't the owners, who aren't the creators, but who are the people that, that get the stuff done. And so we've had six awards in our community so far. We make one award each month, and you can nominate them through a link that appears in the Tourism Partners newsletter. Um, I will tell you, I have cried at every one of them. <laughs> uh, but it's just nice. It's a nice little time out um, to be able to uh, reward and thank someone for um, the spirit that they carry forth when they deal all day long with people that they don't know. Sometimes it's people they know. But, you know, on those peak weekends, it gets hard to keep a smile on your face. It is really hard work. It's very stressful. And we really want to take some time out each month to thank those people who, who do that extra work, who go the extra mile. And the nominations are made by people in the community, which makes it all the more better. Can't say enough about the people that I get to work with. You'll see everybody, including Candy uh, from Tammy's. <laughs> Um, this is a uh, part of our, our Diner Day Wednesday. I think even Chickie's been with us on one of those days. Yeah, maybe. Um, you won't see Joel in this picture because he's always behind the camera and there are very few pictures of him. But I can't say enough about the work that they do. Some are full-time, some are part-time. All of them uh, give a lot of heart and soul to what it is they do. And I'm very proud of their work. And of course, I always end with this slide. Why is it important? Why do we do it? Why is it important for anybody else who lives here or works here? Why should anybody care about tourism? That's for somebody who doesn't live here. And it all goes back to that halo effect. And this is uh, groundbreaking research that was conducted a couple of years back that basically looked at the relationship between tourism marketing and who else it benefited in the community. What did it make that visitor feel when they were there? They respond to an ad enough to to visit a destination, and then how did they feel when they were in that destination? So we know that our tourism messaging also promotes Athens and Athens County and Southeast Ohio as a good place to start a business, a good place to start a career, a good place to attend college, a good place to retire, and a good place to purchase a vacation home. And those are all important messages for us. Not our primary messages, but a byproduct of what we do. And for us, when we look at the investment that so many other organizations make and so many private businesses make in this region, and we look at the efforts of our counterparts at ACENET and Rural Action and the Economic Development Council, it makes it very important for us to put forth a really positive message that reaches all of those little nooks and crannies the best way that we can communicate about Athens County in Southeast Ohio. That was my last slide. How'd I do, Debbie Walker? Ten minutes? I don't know. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Any questions? No one rang their bell. Oh, yeah. Wow. Now we can. I was going to. <laughs> there, oh, thanks. There you well, go. And Paige, let me apologize. What I meant in my comment about uh, being being uh, that I hadn't had dinner yet is that the video of the food. It's was, good, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Scrumptious. It's good. Uh, that's that's Joel Prince's enticing. work. And um, I don't know. The guy just is able to capture, I think, the real essence of our community and the spirit um, of what our community is about. And um, I'm really proud of the work he does. I'm proud of the work that they all do. But when you see it in video, it makes it a little more emotional. So a little more, I guess you just feel that the weight of it. So. Any other I, questions? Oh, I have more of a comment. Um, I'm on the board with you, and I get to see the background of you guys working together, and it's awesome. Thank it's my you. favorite board meeting to go to. Um, and I think that it's you, we cannot emphasize enough the um, like the green open space um, conservation recreational aspect that we have, and it comes in from all sorts, from Wayne to the parks that the city has and the greater parks that are around us. And that is really a huge economic driver for our area. And it I is. think that we've done a really good job um, with you at our helm of being able to sell it 
but also have it be seen in a responsible manner. So, so many times people come in, but I think that because of the quality of the messages and the quality of product, it helps to really bring in people who are going to love Al. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I do believe uh, we do have a couple of uh, comments from uh, the audience. But I'll too will add briefly um, that things have changed since what, 2009 at uh, our first presentation or one of our first presentations mm -hmm. together. It's, it's a much more dynamic um, world we live in and access to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, th those um, platforms were either in their infancy or weren't as relevant as they are now. Right. And, and I applaud your efforts to connect with those, YouTube, um, Instagram, obviously, Twitter, Facebook. Th they're all methods that millennials and everyone else are, are going to first. Right. And so thank you, and thank you for mailing out um, the Windy Nine yeah. um, maps. I, I met a couple fellows from Canada. Yeah, we have were, a lot of riders from yeah. Canada. It's amazing. Yeah. It really is. It, it truly is. And I will tell you, they are the nicest people. Like, hands down, of, of all of the projects that we've worked on, we have met more of the, just the nicest people, and from all um, Key West all the way to California. Um, we had a rider last summer that came for a rally here from England. And when you read the comments online and what people say about our communities and what they say about our back roads and what they say about our culture, like it, it makes you feel good, you know, that, that people who would otherwise not have any reason to come here or, or know anything about us. You know, when Athens, Ohio can show up in Chicago and people are like, hey, I've been there. Your place is awesome. Mm -hmm. That, you know, you're going down the road of something good. So. Well, and thank you for your continued um, hard work and collaboration. I know it's challenging. Um, there's a lot of different entities, you know, the county, the city, um, bo you know, both universities, uh, city of Nelsonville. It's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting dynamic working with all those uh, in, involved and invested partners. So thank you for that. Thank and you. thank you for continuing to, to be uh, plugging away and, and um, doing the best to endorse what we have to offer here in Southeast mm -hmm. Ohio. I do think we had a couple comments. Uh, Councilmember Crow, I think, wanted to share something, uh, followed by Councilmember McGee. Sam Crow, Fort Sunny Cedra. <laughs> um, motorcycles are really cool, but I wanted to just briefly talk about the other bikes. Um, and, and this was discussed, and I think it's a tie between the two presentations. I'm sorry that Caroline uh, had to leave, but I thought it was fantastic and the, the active transportation part of our community and the support that the Athens County Visitors Bureau gives to that and the work of Linda Watkins on the, on the county uh, bikeway committee uh, really deserves a lot of praise. Um, and I just want to mention that it is bike month. So today is national bike, or May is national bike month. And I think the mayor will be talking about this at his press conference on Wednesday. Um, and I wanted to remind the community that uh, Friday is national bike to work day. So don't worry about if it's raining, you know, just put on your gear and uh, bike to work. There'll be four pit stops all throughout the county, um, including in Nelsonville, outside of Rocky Boots. Uh, three, three stops or four stops in Athens here at the courthouse. You can learn how to load your bicycle onto a uh, Athens public transportation bus uh, without having to worry about, you know, being rushed. Uh, you can do that uh, with Jesse Schmitzer right outside here at the courthouse. Uh, there will be another stop uh, near Peden Stadium and one at Mile Marker 1 uh, near the end of Mill Street and also the Habitat House. So come check us out and uh, have a free snack. Or enter the raffle. Uh, let us know where you're riding to. We'd really appreciate hearing from you. Um, also, uh, the Athens Bike Rodeo is on Saturday. So kids ages 2 to 12, roughly, uh, come on out and learn how to ride safely and, and get into the whole biking culture. Uh, and I look forward to hearing more from Paige's crew about the Bailey's project and how we're going to uh, bring that and the changes it's going to uh, bring, hopefully, to the county for, uh, uh, for economic development and, and, and tourism. So thanks for all your work. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Crowell. And then, and just uh, to follow up on that yeah. really quick, um, this is how important the bike culture is. So we take um, something that's important to the community, like local foods, like bicycling, like the university, like the environment. And we turn it into a product. Um, so 
in talking about supporting the Bailey's Project, our role really at this point is to bring forth that bike culture in the strongest manner possible so that if and when the Bailey's Project comes to fruition and is launched, we got all the other bike stuff in place. And to give you an idea, we are in the process right now of developing curated touring routes for bicycling. And we're working on about four routes right now with some local partners. It's actually following the same model that we follow with the Windy Nine, but a curated route, letting people know what to see along the way, where to turn, how to enjoy it. Um, and just building that bike culture and that bike product for us is the top of the list of things that we are sort of looking to the future on. So that's a really great point, and I appreciate it. And yeah, thank you with Bailey's as well, too. I think, as well, the ultra marathon running. Um, yeah. Kick is, bigger every year. Yes, yeah. Is, yeah, exactly. What they've been able to do with Thunder Bunny. Mm -hmm. um, and this is going to be another resource that's, that's uh, going to be a great location. What? Councilmember McGee, did you also? Thank you. <coughs> Patrick McGee, uh, City Council. First, I'd like to say I really appreciate what you do. It's, you. it's remarkable. I just ha had some questions for you, and I, I think it would be a good time to ask these. Uh, the first question, there's actually four of them, so I was trying to keep them in order. Uh, the first question is, um, as far as seasonal, uh, I would assume that summertime is by far the most productive uh, for the seasons. Um, and I just wondered if I'm right on that or, or whether any of the other seasons are even close to generating tourism. Um, a second question would be winter time. Uh, winter is really a dreadful time for so many of the businesses in Athens. And I just wondered, if, is your office doing anything to promote the winter sports in Athens or any kind of activity, winter activity? Because I, I think that would help. A third question would be, uh, are you working at all with the Better Business Bureau? Because I know some of the, our smaller businesses are really hurting. Uh, and I don't think they have a clue, some of them, as to how to even survive if, if the current economy uh, continues. So uh, perhaps you could give them some insight as to what the tourists want when they come to Athens and how uh, some of our local businesses could uh, uh, work with them. And, and then the final question is basically one about um, dealing with uh, transportation. Um, and I mean evening transportation more than anything we've had during the time of city council, we've had some proposals for uh, go-karts to transport people. And I know we were, now we're having some possibilities of, of bicycles uh, and uh, some other stuff. But I, I just wondered whether you have any comments as far as what Athens offers for evening transportation after the people have been doing the, the, uh, the bars and the, the scenes that are offered. So thank you for those four. I'll see if I can remember all four of them. <laughs> Um, to address the seasonal question, the summertime is the best for us because, of course, the university is not at its fullest capacity and the weather is, it tends to be really great until you get to about the first week of August, the fair week, then it gets miserably hot for just a little bit. But it also is um, the best time for us to ask for the business as well. So that has definitely been a growing quarter or growing set of months for us as far as hotel occupancy revenue during that time and success for our businesses, who really in the past used to struggle in the summers. The winter is tough. However, um, and this will parlay into your third and fourth questions. Um, I'm from Louisiana, so your kind of winter is like for inside games, right? <laughs> um, it's, it's tough. And so we are working through these sector groups, our lodging partners, and in particular our food and libations groups, to create things that happen in the winter that can be done inside, but that still showcase the things that are really unique about us. So food and beverage, and our partners and our breweries and wineries are playing a very large role. Um, through that food and libation sector group, you're gonna see a trial run of a restaurant week in early September, and our goal is to be able to host a winter restaurant week, possibly the third or fourth week of January the following year, which again would be a reason to um, create something that happens during that winter time that isn't weather contingent or outdoors contingent. We still have a lot of people who like outdoor recreation in the winter. I don't get it, but we still have a lot of people who like it, so. Paige, I'm sorry, what is a winter 
restaurant week or what might a restaurant week mean? I'm well, sorry. we're working on that right now, but basically we want our food partners to come forward and have a week to celebrate what they, um, what they do. Um, so we're doing it in September when the students come back and we're at sort of full capacity and a chance to sort of run through and they're either going to feature a specific kind of menu or a specific kind of dish or they're just going to highlight special offerings that appear on their menu all the time. Uh, but we really want them to mobilize and I want to give them so much credit for coming to a meeting every month when they have so many other things going on and really brainstorming about how they can promote themselves together. And it's not a 30 mile meal thing. It's not a, oh, you have to carry something local. Restaurant week is about what do you have to serve? What makes your restaurant unique and how can we get new people in your door? So we're going to use that one that we're going to host in September as a model for something that might be a great wintertime event. Uh, but definitely that winter time, that January, February, March, early March, is a hot topic of conversation at those sector meetings, both at, for our lodging partners and our food and libation partners. Um, and we do, the sector meetings were created to be able to work with small businesses to help them identify when their struggles are. You know, there's a seasonality to tourism here. And um, understanding what the seasonality of their business is and understanding when they need the business and when they don't need the business. And it's not just for the lodging partners, but it's for our very small restaurant and food truck partners. It's for those that are, um, that are artists who are trying to find access to market and a place to be able to sell their product at. Um, it's for our farmers. It's just for anybody who wants to participate in the tourism economy. But that is why those sector groups were created, is to identify how we can help them. And of course, we use our partners specifically at ACENET um, to be able to provide them additional technical assistance. Did I get all four questions in there? Well, it was the transportation one too. Transportation, that is a really great question. So actually, um, we've met with HapCap and GoBus because we want to see what a carless experience in Athens looks like. And so using that combination of what is the late night transportation, what is the day transportation, what does the city bus look like, where can you really ride a bike here, especially for someone who might be a bike nov uh, novice. So we actually are working on that and identifying. We do have a list on our website now that tells people how to get around at night. We have a couple of hotel partners that have actually invested in a shuttle. Um, but it is an ongoing question, not just late at night, but how, do, how could someone ride the GO bus here and then not worry about having a car? How would they get around? That's a great question. Anything else from anyone else? Thank you, Chicky. You did great. Thank, Thank you very much. I appreciate thanks. your time. All right. All Thank done. You, thanks for being Thank here. You. Okay. President Nisley, that concludes the items listed for the agenda. Okay. We'll move on to planning and development. Councilmember Fall chairs that, and Councilmembers Jeff Reisner and Grace and McGee. <laughs> I didn't forget you, Patrick. Um, first item on our list is um, changes uh, suggested by Planning Commission recommendation um, with a special use permit having to deal with wireless um, infrastructure placement. Um, do you have some background to that? Would you like to put forward what the Planning Commission was um, anticipating there on that one? I, I absolutely do. There's <laughs> some language, hopefully before you, if not, you'll be getting it soon, but I believe it's before you, that uh, City Planner Paul Logue, as well as um, the Interim Director from Code, uh, Lance Allison, were they, based on our recommendation, we were seeing lots and lots of non-major um, modifications to our, the tall towers around the city. And these were basically antenna swap outs where they were going onto the towers with upgraded um, antennas and coming to us and wanting us to approve it so they could put them on the towers themselves. Again, this was no change in footprint. This wasn't, there wasn't any changes in heights, whether going up or coming down. Um, it was just using the structures that everyone recognizes around the city and replacing, swapping out the antenna arrays. Uh, and in some cases, maybe adding an extra antenna, but again, 
not a major modification to these. And so what we recommended was for uh, the code office and our city planner to come up with some modified uh, modifications to the language to where the code office can review these and approve these without it having to go before the planning commission because it just they were coming up time and time again and they were always being approved because there wasn't anything being changed altering uh, that was altering the towers that was major in nature. Mm -hmm. So part of this is um, defining what a maintenance upgrade would be, is that, um, and looking at footprint sort of thing where you would, um, one of the things that we did talk about a lot with who does, who does the final um, permit um, application and say approval or not approval um, with our right-of-ways, with the, the difference that we were doing and how you can make it um, <coughs> less onerous and, and easier to understand and to use process. Um, and there we kept city council as one of the um, final arbiters about certain types of, of um, grants, granting authority. And that, that there was some question among um, people about whether, that, whether this is a, allowable under the ORC um, given that it is wireless and the wireless um, universe is different than like a right away um, universe and wireless seems to have more federal um, regulations associated too. Mm -hmm. So how do you, you're going to define it's only going to be for maintenance upgrades or and who ultimately has um, say, and what you're saying without it going through planning commission is that council will be taken out of the whole process. Well, unless council would like to see the high level of these right. antenna swap outs, um, then, right. <laughs> then well, we could do that. Yeah. However, again, we're seeing this so often to where this is, I, this is technology. This is mm -hmm. typical, I think, with the upgrade world of the tall towers, the, these, the, the taller ones. This is not small cell. This is not related to small cell at all, uh, or the public right of way as it, as council understands it with these small cell structures. These are, again, the large towers that we see, and it's just swapping out the antennas. And that's mm -hmm. basically what the language speaks to is these minor modifications. Right, and um, how those are defined. Now, if there's a major modification, right. and that triggers something completely different right. where there's oversight by everybody. You know, right. If someone said, I want to take this 140 foot tower and add another 20 feet to it, for that matter, if they wanted to add another five feet to it, that triggers a major right. modification to right. the tower itself. But, and I think that's the um, an important um, definitional um, process that we should make sure is put in there yeah. to really closely define what means maintenance versus upgrade or versus something else. Because we have text here that talks about granting special use permits for new wireless telecommunications facilities. So that's not maintenance. So we need to, it's something we'd want to check. Sure, Because absolutely. if it's new, then what? then I don't think right. that council, yeah. I mean, I can't speak for them, but I can't see that as something that would be turned away or given up. I'll look right. at that. Yeah. Because new would, would, that's a major modification. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and that, it, we can um, kind of model it those sort of things with how we do council, how we do the right of way and small cell stuff now with us council doing the new ones or the major modifications and then if there's just maintenance afterwards, that goes through a, a more administrative process as opposed to a council process. So, but I think that it's important council um, when it's major or when it's new that we need to be have yeah, eyes on. So. So I think that I'd like to have Lisa clarify some of the language in it, um, and then we can look at it next Monday. Sure. So. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, next one is talking about outdoor fires on a day today. Um, the fire chief has um, forwarded language to upgrade um, and update the fire when you need a fire permit in the city um, and I think one of the, the prime movers of this is more and more people are getting outdoor fire pits and having small outdoor, you know, you used to have bonfires, now you have these little pit fires. And they even sell those um, packs of 
wood that has the fuse on it and everything, you know, everything. I'm always looking at this. So I think what is important is that right now you pretty much have to have a permit to do a lot of different fire activity. And what this will do is um, reduce the, t um, the types of um, equipment that you can burn in um, to where you do not have to get a permit. However, and so that would be fire in a charcoal grill, an improved covered metal container or incinerator of not more than one half inch mesh in an outdoor fireplace or grill with not less than one half inch mesh screen that covers it. Um, and that it's an approved um, construction approved by the fire chief. Um, and that there's some requirements about what would be burnt in these um, equipment where it's only clean seasoned wood, firewood, meaning no garbage, no plastics, no red cups, seasoned wood. I would say um, it should be like pest free wood. Um, it's better to always burn local wood because we don't want to bring in various creepy crawlies that infect our wood. Um, and that to um, the fire chief or his designee will do permitting. And that there's two sections added um, and basically these are safety sections that when there's a smog alert or high winds or other various types of warnings that you will not be able to burn. Um, in those circumstances, um, prolonged drought conditions and that will be, um, you know, if, it, if the EPA is saying that it's bad air days, those sort of things. And that if you have one of these open burning bonfire, recreational fires, that there will be somebody at the fire, over 18, all the time. And that the, um, there's some kind of way to put it out. Burn, you know, a water barrel, fire extinguisher, garden hose, a water truck shall be available. And that they should not burn for more than three hours. So it's um, making it so that you can have those fire pits. Questions? Um, I was wondering, on, in Section A, it deals with outdoor fire places, and it says that um, no person shall kindle or cause to be kindled in a fire in any outdoor fireplace from the like within 25 feet of a structure, alley, or roadway. And I just wondered. That 25 feet seems arbitrary to me. Is there any reason why it's 25 feet? If, if it's a viable outdoor fireplace as opposed to a fire pit, it would seem to me that um, there shouldn't be any reason why it can't mm -hmm. be either connected to a patio or a, a home. Right. I, I think that that would be something that I would have Chief Reimer put, answer, since this is his language that he's put forward. Um, he is our resident expert. I'm certainly not one. So I will, we can get that to him before next week. Thank you. Right. We'll look into that. It might be something coming In, through the, from the fire marshal. Fire marshal. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll look into it. Thank you. Yeah. So, other questions? So, this should be coming forward on Monday also. Um, and then there's kind of two. Uh, housekeeping. The local board of tax review that we had um, amended to title 15, we would like to amend it now to title 17. So it's just taking everything that says 15.00 or 15.01 and putting it into title 17 because title 15 is going away. So that's more of a housekeeping has to do with the municipal tax. Um, income tax language that we were kind of forced into putting. In. So maybe we can just have it skipping around all over the Athens city code and nobody would be able to find it. Um, so that will come forward <coughs> Monday. And then there's an amendment to um, ordinance 1919, which had a um, right of easement, uh, enhanced access easement. And that is being changed because the um, parcel numbers were not right. So we will update the parcel numbers and make sure that everything is legally right. They were transposed. Or they were transposed. They were transposed. And when so. I saw that email, my heart sunk. <laughs> yeah. So we've got it corrected. And we also got confirmation, I think, 
um, clerk of council have seen this already as well from Linda Bailiff, yep. who's the director for OPWC. Right, I saw the, the for that all that paperwork that came through. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, okay. any question on that? Great. Thank you. That's all for planning. That's all. it. Okay. We move on to finance and personnel. Council Member Reisner chairing that, and Council Member Butler and Crowell. Personnel Committee, um, Clerk of Council uh, for the meeting uh, gave me a list of things under appropriations. First item I have here is um, $34,749.70 to the judges, this means the Municipal Court Judge Computer Fund for grant funds received from the Ohio Supreme Court for additional improvements to the municipal court case management system, that being a computer system. So if there's no reason not to, then next Monday we'll bring this forward. I haven't heard anything back from um, the auditor on this, so I assume that she's been informed. Uh, second item, $14,000 to the Athens City Enhancement Fund for fireworks, America in Bloom, Microgrants, and Public Art. Um, these all seem very worthy things. Uh, does anyone want to the art? What? I just like fireworks. Fireworks, America in Bloom, not Boom, but Bloom, <laughs> Microgrants, and Public Art. Member of the audience? Care to speak? <laughs> Thank you. This is apparently the night for members of council to speak from the podium. Sarah Grace, member at large, and I live at 165 North Congress Street. I just wanted to bring before the Finance Committee tonight a reminder of um, the presentation from a couple weeks ago. Uh, Ruth Dudding from the board of CFI came in and talked to us about all the wonderful work that CFI does in our community. And I just wanted to recommend that we as a council prioritize their work and show our support um, by appropriating funding for their work. Um, the CFI funds are spent in our local community. So not only do they provide an incredibly valuable service of food, education, um, for many members as a community, but all the money that they spend goes back to local, local food. It, it goes into the farmer's market, to the produce auction. So it's, it's staying right here and so supporting the local economy and our, our local food producers. Um, and the work that they do is absolutely supported by um, the Athens Sustainability Action Plan. Um, we, we have in there that it's the goal for the city to support um, sustainable food production, and that's absolutely um, an effort that is it's key to CFI. And um, we talked about the food insecurity in this county and the poverty in our in our community. It was a big highlighted feature today in in the Athens News. If anyone has not yet had an opportunity to read the articles um, talking about, uh, unfortunately. We are number one in the state for food insecurity. And um, that's something that we have many local partners that are working hard to, to change that, and CFI is, is one of those partners. And um, if anyone has any questions, uh, the brand new executive director of, of CFI, um, Marianne Martinez, is here if, if anyone would like to speak or direct questions to her. But she was gracious enough to, to come um, for that purpose. But I just, I wanted to bring it before the Finance Committee. I think this is 
this is well worth the city investing in, and I, I would um, highly, highly support financial support to CFI. Uh, Member Butler. Thank you. Councilmember Grace, um, make sure my mic is on. It's on. Thank you. Check. Can you kindly remind us the amount that CFI was asking? Uh, yes. I, CFI requested $8,000, and this goes to um, another program that, that we love and know of its incredible value to our community, and that's for Comcor. Um, CFI does not have a large operating budget. Um, and a lot of, of the work that is done is, is done through, through their Comcore member. And um, so I, I would recommend that, that we honor that request and do, do our best to, to send $8,000 to CFI. And I think there are many um, possible, um, I, I think the, the community enhancement, um, possibly because CFI really supports um, Composting efforts through education and you know offering composting, we could um, look at that as a possible option for for funding. Member Crump, well, thank you, Member uh, Grace. Uh, I, I I find myself in complete agreement with you. I, I, well, thank you. So <laughs> I, I'm persuaded. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, which funding line or lines the city can find the eight thousand dollars from. I haven't heard anything from the administration. Is I'm putting you on the spot, Mr. Mayor. No, that's good. <laughs> I appreciate you being put on the spot. Uh, we have um, donated to CFI in the past. I believe it's been six thousand um, dollars. We typically take that money from Athens Enhancement and the Garbage Fund uh, because CFI has a lot of community gardens out there. It's most notable is the garden at on Hope Drive, mm -hmm. which I. I'm just fascinated by and, and love that down there for young entrepreneurs. You're talking uh, about the uh, kids? Yeah, uh, kids. Uh -huh. um, as well as there's a, a community garden or garden up in Trimble. Um, up, uh, I think it's the Trimble School District. There's a garden up there. There's several of them. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we chose to take 3000 from the garbage fund uh, for composting and then 3000 from the Athens Enhancement so we can figure out what kind of a mix we can put together. Um, so this will be a larger ask than we have paid in the past to figure out which budget line that we take up from. And just as a reminder, the Athens Enhancement budget, uh, the money that's there, it's finite. It's mm -hmm. not a growing account line at all. Like it used to be in the past, when I say growing, that there was a fair amount of money coming into that particular fund. So we'll, just, we'll figure it out. Do you think by uh, next Monday we may have something that we could bring sure. forward? Or? Okay. Uh, Member Butler. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, too, for that as well. And, and um, Councilmember Grace did acknowledge that Ms. Martinez was here this evening. I didn't know if this was an appropriate, if she wanted oh, I the opportunity to be I did know she was saying. Yeah, so I, I didn't know if you wanted that opportunity. Yeah, I'd be happy to answer any questions from the podium. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions to put forward to her? Well, I'll, I'll ask a question. <laughs> Go to the podium. <laughs> Thank you, and, and welcome, by the way. Be gentle. I've been here less than two weeks. <laughs> but everything that Ms. Dunning said, uh, Councilman Dunning said, is absolutely true. Um, in looking at the finances as a newly arrived executive director, I was amazed to see of all the places I've been, the three quarters of what comes in goes right back out into the community. It's a very small fraction that supports a very small staff. So the Comcore members are absolutely essential. Um, we go to the produce auction, our donation station program goes to the produce auction. We buy vegetables, we go to the farmer's market, we get vegetables. We're also donated large amounts of vegetables. Those all go back out on the pick -up pantry pickup days to the pantries. Um, we're going to be starting a study, hopefully, with some grant funding called Rooted in Evidence to be able to look at the nutritional contribution that those vegetables make to the average pantry package that someone walks away with. So um, I came all the way from New England to work for this group because it's wonderful people, wonderful community. I'm loving Athens so far. 
No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. That was all good information. Uh, my question actually is about, I believe, tomorrow's event, which uh, we're all, or some of us, are a little late to the game planning our, we were planting our garden this past right. weekend. The pick but I believe there is a yeah. plant, a starter giveaway there is. tomorrow in several for those different who locations. haven't got their plants in the ground yet. Yeah. So my question really was, yeah. Um, how people can get them. Come and get some tomato plants and things. I'm going to be picking some up um, that uh, Dan from Hawking College has been growing at the um, Tri-County um, School up in, uh, up in Nelsonville and bringing them in my car this morning and tomorrow morning. So, yeah. so where are the locations where people can come and um, At ASNET, ASNET and, and uh, Meigs oh, County. Um, there's another pickup in Nelson, I don't know the locations okay. yet. My but geography I'm sure the information's is not, online if yeah. people are interested. In, in fact, I, I was over at the county jail thinking it was the town hall, so. Oh. <laughs> Close. <laughs> By next year, I'll be able to know where, how to get everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, there are flyers out, and um, I can get your email address and send you one. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and You're welcome. welcome. Okay. Thank you. Okay, last item. 19,000. Uh, Mayor, Mayor? Oh, Mr. Mayor, go ahead. Last item on your appropriation. Yeah. One of the things you mentioned as part of the bundle that you just spoke to was the micro grants. Yes. Um, and I just want to recognize Council Member Fall. She's the one who brought forward this idea. I know she's sitting in the audience. Oh, there she is. Um, <laughs> but she was the, the individual who brought forward the concept of doing this to where we could create up to four. $250 micro grants for neighborhoods. Uh, it could be beautification projects, it could be safety projects, it could be a number of different things within a, the community, throughout the community. Um, there's, there are guidelines that you have to have. I believe it's six households um, that are on the application. Um, so they're, they're um, showing that there is a number of people who are gonna be involved in whatever the project is with that money. But that money, too, as you just mentioned, would come from the Athens Enhancement. Hopefully we can do this for a while, where it's $1,000 that we're dedicating uh, each year for these micro-grants. I think it's fascinating. Um, Ron Lucas has put a, a fair amount of work into kind of tweaking the application process. And, and uh, so with this money, we'll be able to put that out there and go live. Uh, yeah, it really, really does sound interesting. I'm just thinking of a couple of ideas. Hmm, may I apply for a grant? <laughs> um, well, that brings well, the last item on, on that, uh, the, the public art. How much are we, or is the administration thinking about putting towards public art from this $14,000? Um, I'm not sure about that particular piece. Okay. Anyone else have any idea? I guess we're talking about statues or paintings or topiary or what? <laughs> uh, I'm drawing a complete blank on yeah, the, I that think, for yeah, the arts. Something. I was trying to think if it was related to the Municipal Arts Commission. Um, clerk. To be clarified. You, okay. okay. We, we need to double check. Okay. okay. Is it for the sewer? The project. Mm -hmm. uh, the mural project? Mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. no, that has already been budgeted. Yeah. yeah, that was done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. Why. Oh, sorry. President Nyssen. Nice. President Nyssen. Nice. Nice. Reisner, was there also, a, a, did you mention America in Bloom? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what was the amount? I'm sorry. There weren't amounts. Oh. So there's no amount. It's just, just total. one amount. Those I understand now. Okay. Yeah. So it was a, a summary number mm -hmm. of which those things would be itemized out. Yeah, that would be helpful. Well, we know how much the micro grants are going to be, yeah. so. Back out the other yeah, two. See, okay. see how the $13,000. We'll get that out of them. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now we'll be related with the art, <laughs> what art project we're talking about. Okay, okay last but not least, $19,000 to the Internal Service Fund for Internal Phone System, quote, cost savings, unquote, project. So we're spending $19,000 to save money. <laughs> yeah, spend money to save money. Oh. Okay. Just wondered. We're talking about the, the city system. Okay, obviously. So bring that forward on Monday. Have something ready. Questions on that? Why we need telephones? Okay. Would this by any chance have anything to do with the fact that there are telephone 
numbers and lines within the city that have not been used or are just sort of lying idle and it's time to sort of get rid of them? No, but we did do a kind of a deep dive with identifying phone lines that we were actually paying uh, to keep active, uh -huh. but doing an inventory to find out are they all being used? And we, we identified 28 phone lines in the city of Athens that were not being used. Wow. And there's going to be savings with that because those have been deactivated. We also found out after the fact that, you know, I think there was maybe one or two that was, oops, no, nope, that's being used. Okay. And, yeah. uh, but, but that happens. Uh -huh. uh, I'll share a real quick story, and that is that uh, in talking with the mayor of Belfry, um, they, they had identified a phone line that they had been paying for many, many years that was a line that went out to a wellhead that was no longer operational. So there's a phone out in the middle of the field. Um, oh, okay. Not, just a phone line, not yeah. technically a phone. Um, but anyway, so we've we've um, we've identified some significant savings from those. The uh, this in turn is is taking upgrading our Shortel system to Mitel. So it's a, mm -hmm. there's an upgrade there. There's in the long run there's going to be savings with that as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I have. Great. We have one last item for everyone: the committee of the whole. And I don't think it'll take too long. <laughs> and this item is for the NOPEC Energized Community Grant. And this is something to which uh, we applied, the city applied to last year. It was $12,000 grant program. And that did solar powered lights for our bus shelters last year. And I believe that the, this year's project then is going to be purchasing portable solar-powered personal device charging stations to go on the benches, correct? That's correct. Um, okay. What we're exploring, this is a small grant that we're entitled to through NOPEC. Um, as President Nisley mentioned last year, we were able to get uh, $11,400 for solar-powered lighting in our new bus shelters on East State Street. Um, this year, what we're planning to do is apply again but as the president, as he was saying, it would be for um, basically picnic tables, um, kind of octagon or hexagon shaped picnic tables with several seats on it. But the uh, umbrella pole, instead of having an umbrella on it, it will have a solar panel or two on it. And coming out at table level will be a multitude of plugs for people to charge in their personal devices or cell phones or whatnot while at the city swimming pool. They're portable as well. We're hoping to get two of these. And um, we're hoping that with two, well, we know that we can do this, is that they're light enough where we can transport these and use them for other events, whether it's something at West State Street ball fields or whether it's something on Court Street with an event during one of our summer street closings, uh, that it becomes another asset the city of Athens can deploy and uh, have people charge their cell phones or your tablet or whatever you have, whatever you use. Okay, yes, wow. Councilmember Fall. Um, can you uh, remind people who NOPEC is? Oh, I can, absolutely. Yes. NOPEC is the Northeast Ohio Public Energy Council, right. of which we are members through the gas aggregation, um, and that the money from these grants comes via that, the, the gas aggregation. Right, because we did do a fee to do solar and these sort of things, so this is another way that we can increase um, use of solar. Um, personally, I'm, I'm interested in this particular um, avenue of, of community solar, uh, because if they work out well, it would make sense to maybe purchase more in poor resiliency, so, because these would be great if, you know, derecho comes back or whatever climate change has in store for us. And that, that would probably be a huge asset for people in that community. I, I agree. Initially, we had, had explored, not knowing what the cost was, we had explored portable solar, not, not a generator, but a solar power plant, if you will, um, some, similar to what Third Sun has that they take out to the pop-off fest. Um, but that was cost prohibitive to do something like that. But this fits in alignment. I agree with you. This becomes a sustainability type of uh, an element. 
here in the city, and it certainly complements our new um, electric vehicle charging station mm -hmm. that is in front of the city swimming pool. Thank you. It's nice. Great. Yes, Council Member Crow. Um, I trust the city will do due diligence in, in researching these. They're very popular in the uh, higher education sustainability world. And the Green School Listserv is often talking about different products that are out there for these. And some people, they're not, theirs aren't working so well, or they weren't made very effectively. So there's a lot of different versions out there. And I just trust that there'll be some research behind. We have to provide three separate bids, um, or three separate quotes, not bids, three separate um, uh, quotes from various vendors out there. Um, and so. We will certainly do that. You have to by grant. Um, but to remind everyone, we do have several solar offer, um, solar panel companies here in the city. We'll look at all of them. But it, Council Member Crowell, if you have information well, that, that yeah. would, or could get that, that would be really helpful. I mean, the, 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 the products that I've working. seen are, are, I don't believe, are, are made by the local solar companies. You know, these are these are uh, these are manufactured products that have the panels on the umbrella, but I don't believe our local companies make that product. We do. We have oh. one solar vendor here in the city of Athens that, that makes a solar charging station, portable solar charging station. Mm. Good to know. Okay. Any other questions or comments? We could do it. If not, we stand adjourned at eight twenty-seven p.m. and we'll see you all next Monday. Thank you very much. Mm.